Finally, we come to whom Picasso and Matisse called father of us all, Paul Cezanne. We are inarguably in the age of modern art now. Cezanne was born in 1839 in Aix-en-Provence. He was actually a year older than Monet and two years older than Renard. But just about everybody categorizes his paintings to a later generation. His father was a merchant exporter and the co-founder of Bank Cezanne et Cabasso, which was successful during Cezanne's lifetime. Obeying his father, Cezanne began his law study at Aix University in 1859, but his heart was not in law. He attended evening schools to learn drawing. Incidentally, his solid drawing skills formed one of the most important foundations for his future paintings. Among his childhood friends was a later famous writer, Emile Zola, who encouraged him to go to Paris to pursue art. Through much struggle, Cézanne's stubborn father finally gave in to let him pursue art in 1861. In the difficult years thereafter, Zola's friendship and encouragement were critically important to Cézanne. Cézanne persevered probably because of those encouragement he got from Zola and the stubborn genes he got from his father. In Paris, when Cézanne was doing life drawings at the Academy Suisse, he met Camille Pissarro, the Impressionist who was nine years older. Cézanne's first sojourn to Paris lasted only six months. The experience could probably be summarized in two words, nothing worked. At the end of the period, he destroyed most of his paintings, returned to Aix-en-Provence, and took a job at his father's bank. He must have felt the end of his painting career. A year later, he left the bank and set up a painting studio at home, but his father was obviously not happy with him. By late 1862, he was back in Paris and met Monet and Renoir in 1863 at the Académie Suisse. The École des Beaux-Arts, or School of Fine Art, rejected his application. The Paris Salon rejected his submissions. In fact, his one and only Salon acceptance did not come till 1882. Of that success, we are not even sure which painting did the trick. Probably it was this painting of his father. The 1860s was his dark decade, talking about the constant feeling of a total failure. Somehow at the end of the decade, his life looked up. Octave Fique, a 19-year-old part-time model of Academy Swiss, became his lover. I don't know which part of this apparent peculiar character, timid and violent, emotional in the extreme, according to art critic Gustave Giffroy, spending his days painting murders, rapes, and orgies, impressed Fiquet. You know, at this time, Monet hadn't painted his Impression Soleil Levant, which gave the name Impressionism. Expressionism wouldn't be around for another 30 years. In any case, facing the invading Prussian forces, the couple moved south and settled in Lestac, which was near Marseille, less than 30 kilometers or 20 miles from Aix. In 1872, Cézanne moved back to Paris. He lived in ouvert sur oise which was next to Pontoise, where Pissarro lived. Pissarro was very nice to Cézanne and almost became a father figure to him, and convinced him to stop using dark colors, especially black. They often worked together in this period. Cézanne also got an art dealer with whom he could exchange paintings for paint, so painting could go on. Also, his son Paul was born. His relationship with Fiquet and the birth of his son was hidden from his father, with whom the relationship remained uneasy. In the first exhibition of the Impressionists in 1874, you know the one held in Nadar's studio? Cézanne showed three paintings and sold one for 300 francs. 
he was soon picking up enthusiastic collectors. Things were finally taking shape for him. Another eventful year for Cezanne was 1886. In April, his childhood friend Emil Zola, who played a big part in encouraging him to switch from law or banking to art, published a novel called *L'œuvre*, or *The Work*, which was translated into English under the title *The Masterpiece*. It was a novel about a failed artist. Cezanne took it personally. I don't know whether he read the novel in the sense of a failed artist, laughed at by his childhood friend, in the form of a successful writer. Somehow, Zola, a successful writer and a sensitive man, did not appreciate Cezanne's difficult position in that time. He should have realized Cezanne's fight in the dark, already laughed at by the rest of the world. Regardless what happened, their friendship essentially ended right there. But his life was looking up. Also in April, finally, Cezanne made his relation with Fiquet public and married her. Their son Paul was 14 years old. In October, his father died and left him 400,000 francs, a princely sum. His financial problems finally went away for good. Cezanne was 47 that year. Also around this time, the world started to appreciate what he was doing. His long struggle finally showed results. I want to make a side note here that his progression was far from abnormal. Everything takes time. For instance, even for me to do this series on modern art, I was feeling my way around for quite a while. And I don't mean how to record sound or edit videos, which was also new to me. The only thing I knew at the beginning was that. There was no series like this on the internet, and I probably knew enough to make one. In fact, it was just about now I began to realize what I'm doing, and this is my episode 13. Back to Cezanne, without the need to sell paintings, he became increasingly seclusive. By 1890, many painters in Paris thought that he was dead. In about 1890, when he was 50. He started to suffer from diabetes, which made him even more irritable and drove him into deeper depression. But this stubborn and awkward man stuck to his gun, looking for that harmony. It was in this period, without financial worries and with all his focus, intensity, and stubbornness, despite his health problems, he painted his famous series of more than 60 paintings of Montaigne. Saint Victor, or Mountain Saint Victor, which was a limestone mountain ridge overlooking Aix-en-Provence. His numerous still lifes, especially apples and portraits, including many self-portraits. In 1895, Paris art dealer Ambroise Vollard gave Cézanne a one-man show in his gallery, showing more than 150 of his paintings. As you might have imagined by now, Cezanne did not attend. He had paintings to do. Volard's show gave Cezanne an increasing recognition. His paintings become in demand. When Emil Zola died in 1903, Zola's art collection was auctioned off. Cezanne's paintings were sold for an average of 1,500 francs a piece. On October 13, 1906, Cezanne was so sick after painting for several hours in a torrential storm that he had to be carried to his bed by two men. Early the next morning, he went back to the garden, painting again. That was the last time he was able to paint outside. As soon as he felt well enough, he would get up to paint until he died on October 23 of pneumonia. Like a true soldier, he died in the battlefield. After Cezanne died, his fame took off. Today, we all know his impact, touching every one of us. If you don't agree with me, please watch the next few episodes. I'll see you next time.